Hopefully I'm all aligned. Good, I'm aligned. Alright, so... We need to do f of g of x, and then uh, we need to find the domain of that. Okay? So basically, I need to find f here of 2x minus 7. Well, that's going to be 3 times... 2x minus 7 to the negative 1 power. So f of g of x is going to be 3 over 2x minus 7. Okay? That is my function. Now, let's talk domains. The domain of f is what? It is not all real numbers. When thinking about f, this really, what I'm thinking in my brain, is that x can't equal 0. So we've got all real numbers with the exception of x cannot equal 0. Okay. Then I need to look at the domain of G. Domain of G. All real numbers. No fractions. No radicals. Then I need to look at the domain just of my composition. Domain of the composition. All real numbers, but no. Negative seven over two? Positive seven over two. So, what's up? So take the denominator, 2x minus 7, and that can equal 0. So 2x can equal 7, so x can equal 7 halves. Because it's got an exponent of negative 1. We don't like negative exponents. Never have, never will. Or if it's on the bottom, put it on the top. Okay? So, what is my final domain then of f of g of x? We agree with that. All real numbers except x cannot equal zero or seven negative or excuse me, positive seven halves. Do we agree with that? I don't. Oops, I'm standing right at the microphone. That's probably why people can't hear me. Huh? Sorry about that. They said it was all real numbers except zero and seven halves. Well, let's look. What's going into what? G is going into F, correct? Yeah. Okay. So, there's no restrictions on G, correct? Okay. Well, when I put that in, the only restriction then is, is that, that 2x minus 7 can't equal 0, right? So, let's try 0 in my new function. If I do x equals 0, and I plug x equals 0 into g, 
right? 2 times 0 is 0 minus 7 is negative 7. If I put negative 7 into F, I get negative 3 sevenths, correct? If I put, so I need to find F of negative 7, that's negative 3 sevenths, right? Is that a fraction that I can find? Is that a real number? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So zero here gets kicked out of the restrictions because of what we're putting into, where we're putting into. Okay. The only restriction is x cannot equal 7 halves. Because that then would give me dividing by zero in the end. Okay. Today we're going to go on to section 6.4 or 6-4, whichever one you prefer. And we're going to talk about inverse functions. Okay? So we did a little bit of inverse functions back in Algebra 2. Okay? So we need to find the inverse of the function. The function I gave was f of x equals 4x plus 2. Okay? Four quick, easy steps. I only have three of them up there, but I'm going to put a fourth one up there at the end. The first one is you are going to replace f of x with y. So this would then become y here equals 4x plus 2. Quick, easy. Change it out of function notation and into x and y notation. Okay? Questions on that? Okay. Second step, you are going to switch the position of x and y. So x becomes y, y becomes x. So you flippity-flop x and y. Questions on that? Third step, you're going to solve that new equation for y. So here I would subtract 2. Then I would divide both sides by 4. giving me x minus 2 over 4 equals y. Questions on that? Okay. I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know what you did wrong either. <coughs> Subtract the 2 I and then divide it by 4. Has to be done in that order. It would be one fourth x minus one half. So what can you do with x minus one half? No, nope. you got to divide them both. Yep. Okay. Then my last step is you are going to put it back in function notation. Now, function notation with inverses is a little different. Okay? Function notation with inverses says the inverse of f of x is written as this. Okay? You read this as the inverse of f of x. Okay? That's how you read that. You don't read it as 
f to the negative 1 power of x. Okay? We read it as the inverse of f of x. Okay? So back here, this would become the inverse of x, or the inverse of f of x, is equal to x minus 2 over 4. We have an exponent that is equal to negative 1. I guess that means it's negative 1 there because why? That means that sig that's the symbol for okay. inverse. So it all will be negative 1. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, can't be anything else. Okay. With me? of that. So what I want you to do is I want you to find me the inverse of f of x and hopefully it matches up with one of these four that you get. Okay? Find it. So first off we switch to y. flop. Then we solve for y. Then I divide by three. fifth root on both sides. So that tells me that this one is my inverse. Yes? Composition property of inverses. Okay? So if f and g are truly inverse functions, then f of g of x should be equal to x, and g of f of x should be equal to x. If I give you the question, show that these two functions are inverses, or if I give you the question, prove that these two functions are inverses, you have to show both of those. You can't just find the inverse in order to show it or prove it. You've got to show it using the composition property of inverses. And that composition property of inverses is just that. You take half of g of x, do it, you should get x at the end. Then you take g of f of x, do it, you should get x at the end. If you get them both, they're inverses. If you don't get it on one, you still do the other one to make sure. Okay? With me? Okay? So, we just had, we had f of x equaling 3x to the fifth minus 2. Whoa, tap the brake.
Drake's child. So big. Okay. All right. And then we found the inverse, which we'll call g of x in this case, was the fifth root of x plus 2 over 3, correct? Yep. Okay. So, to show that those two are truly inverses, I would first have to show f of g of x is equal to x. So, I would need to show that f of the fifth root of x plus 2 divided by 3 is x. So that would be 3 times that the fifth power, then minus 2. Okay. Fifth root to the fifth power does what for me? Cancels it out. Okay. So this becomes 3 times x plus 2 over 3, then minus 2. Multiplying by 3 in a fraction that's dividing by 3 does what? Cancels it out. So this becomes x plus 2 minus 2. Subtracting 2 when you're adding 2 cancels it out, leaves me with x there. Okay. Now, that's not enough. That's only partial enough. Now, I've got to go and I've got to show that g of f of x also equals x. So this is g of 3x to the 5th minus 2 is going to be the 5th root of 3x to the 5th minus 2 plus 2 divided by 3. Negative 2 plus 2. So this becomes the fifth root of 3x to the fifth over 3. 3x to the fifth divided by 3. x to the fifth. The fifth root of x to the fifth is x. So by the composition rule of inverses, we have now proven that those two functions are in fact inverses of each other. With me? Okay. Verify that those two are in fact inverses. So first thing we got to show is we got to show that f of g of x is equal to x. So f of 1 fourth x minus 1 half would be 4 times one fourth x minus one half plus two distribute that's going to be x minus two plus two that's going to be x. Then I have to show that g of f 
of x is also equal to x. So that would be g of 4x plus 2 is going to be 1 fourth times 4x plus 2 minus 1 half. Again, distributing, that gives me x plus 1 half minus 1 half, which gives me x. Both of them give me x, so f and g are inverses. bigger for you. one gives me x plus rot row. Not good, right? Not good. Okay. So let's check the other one just in case we might have done some math wrong. Excellent. G of three x minus one. minus one third plus one, that's x plus two thirds. Inverses? No, not inverses. If one doesn't work, try it the other way. If they both don't work, not inverses. Okay? Negative one third plus one is two thirds. Negative one third plus three thirds. Three thirds is like one. So negative one plus three is two. Okay? Two thirds. This homework will be due on Monday. You can't do all of it yet because you haven't been, we don't know what a one-to-one -one function is yet. We're going to learn what a one-to-one -one function is. 